to get our particles moving around, we need to understand a little bit about how flocking behavior works. It's emergent behavior that's sometimes very complex, but coming from very simple rules. In the case of our butterflies, all we need is a rule that says all of our entities will stay in a group, and another rule that says all of them will avoid each other. They won't collide. And from those two simple rules, we get a complex procedural animation that we can partly direct because we can make them fly in different places and, and do different things without ever crashing through each other. So this is pretty cool stuff. I want to select my particles and in the dynamics menu set, I'll add a field called radial. You can go into the options. It's got a default magnitude of 5, and that's fine. A radial field is going to push particles away from it. So if I take it with this value, then we'll expect to see all our particles fly away. In this case, however, I want to change a couple of these options. For example, attenuation, I want to turn that off. That's a sort of fall-off factor that's location-based and I don't want to see that in this case, so I'm going to turn it off. I also want to turn off max distance, which is a limit on the influence of the field based upon distance from its icon in the viewport. I've got a magnitude of 5, attenuation 0, max distance off. And while we're at it, we might as well name this because this one is going to be a radial field to hold the group together. So I'm going to call it a radial attractor. Click Create. Now we won't see it attract at first, it'll actually repel because it's got a positive value. Okay, so they're all flying away. I've still got that radial field selected and either in its attributes or in the channel box. I can change its magnitude to a negative value. Set of 5, I'll give it negative 5. Press Enter, Rewind and Playback, and now we see something a bit odd. All this is, is that they're passing through each other with no collision detection. What we're seeing here is momentum, or inertia, in action. And in Maya terminology, that's the conserve attribute of the particles. When I play this simulation, they're all pulled towards the center, but since they have no collision detection, they pass through each other. Then, they continue outward on their own momentum, but eventually, the field strength overcomes that momentum and brings them back in. And so we will get this oscillation forever if we don't do anything. So I'll rewind that. I'm actually going to move the radial field out a little bit more so we can see a little bit more clearly how it works. Now all the particles are flying through, but because of their momentum and lack of collision detection, they oscillate. I'll show you something interesting, which is the conserve attribute. If you select the particles and go into their shape attributes, you'll see conserve, that's its momentum. If I turn it down to zero, I've turned inertia off in my universe, and the particles will all be pulled towards there, but they'll just end up there and stop. They won't pass through to the other side. That's just a little sidetrack to show you what conserve is all about. I'll turn it back up to 1, and we'll get back to that initial behavior we saw before. Next, we need collision detection, and we're going to sort of create our own collision detection by adding a radial field and then connecting it to the particles. So I'll add another radial field now. And with the particles selected, dynamics menu set, I'll go to fields, radial options once again. And this time it's going to be a radial repeller. And it is going to have a positive magnitude. But we do want to have attenuation and max distance in this case. We want there to be a sort of shell around each particle, kind of like each butterfly's personal space. Other butterflies don't want to enter that personal space. And by giving it an attenuation, we'll make that a fuzzy boundary. So I'll set it to 1. 
And then I've also got max distance, which is the extent of the field. So I want to turn that on too and set that to, I'm not sure, but at least five, probably more like 10 and press enter. So I've set these in advance because I kind of know what I want. I'm using a magnitude of positive five to roughly cancel out the magnitude of negative five for the attractor field. I've got attenuation so that there'll be a fuzzy boundary around each particle rather than a hard boundary. And I've set the maximum distance, which is the extent of the field around each particle. So I'll click create, rewind and play back. We still don't see the effect that we want because there's actually a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to make these particles the source of the field. So it's probably easiest to do that from the outliner. I just want to select the particle system and the field at the same time. And in the fields menu, I'll choose use selected as source of field. And as soon as I did that, you might notice that the field icon moved because now that field icon is placed at the average position of all the particles. If you use that command with a piece of geometry, it would make the object's pivot point the center of the field. But for particles, it finds the average of all the particles' positions. We're almost there. We've got one more switch that we need to turn on, and that's in the field attributes. So the field now has been made a child of the particle system. So this repeller field, I want to select that, and in its shape node attributes, you'll see apply per vertex. Let me turn that on or type in a one. So you can access that from the channel box or the attribute editor. Okay, we're getting a little bit better. We've got them flying around and they're not crashing into each other. I've still got the repeller field active, so I can set maybe a greater max distance, maybe 20, and rewind. Oh, there we go. And if we let that play for a while, then that oscillation will eventually settle down. Or I can just move the field back where it was, rewind, play back. And we've actually got a pretty cheap and simple flocking system working. If we render this in software, we won't see the spheres. Let me play this through for a minute. And if I like that, then I'll select my particles and set the initial state. Remember that you can't unset the initial state, so this would be a good time to save. Save scene as Butterfly Animated 03. And then I'll set the initial state. So with the particles selected, I'll go to Solvers. Initial state set for selected. And that'll be their position and orientation on frame one. Cool, so they're already in movement. Then I can animate that radial attractor field. So here it is, radial attractor. Frame one, I'll just key its translates. Right click and key selected. I'll go to frame maybe 160. Don't be alarmed if your particles fly away. I'm not concerned about that right now. Go over here and key it, rewind, and play back. And now they're following that attractor field. And I could attach it to a motion path or anything I want. Don't forget that with particles, you always do need to create a particle disk cache. So I'll select my particles once again. And then under solvers, once again, create particle disk cache. I'll just take the default options, plays through, and now I can scrub in my timeline and integrate that with other animation. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the particle instancer and look for more at digitalartsguild.com.